Hello, hello, everybody. It's the interview queen, Alicia Toot here, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to my interview with Chris number two from Antiflag. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Um, like I said, I every time I see somebody doing the Zoom interview and they're in their car, I'm like, what is happening in their life that they're in their car right now? <laughs> and uh, I will tell you what's happening in my life. We're working on a new building we got for the band in our recording studio, and um as we were talking before we hit record i literally was like putting a sink in the office and i uh, got a like alert uh 10 oh minute God. warning yeah <laughs> thankfully i set a reminder so i ran out here to do this so i apologize that i'm a bit disheveled and a guy who uh just drilled a hole in concrete to put plumbing in but i'm excited to talk to you and do this interview and we'll answer all of your questions honestly and to the best of my ability so let's do it i absolutely appreciate it whether from the car from the actual spot you just put the sink in or whether your house wherever you're calling from just like to have you on the show regardless so thank you for taking cool, that. Cool, cool. <laughs> well aside from being absolutely just crazy busy at the moment i just want to ask how are you kind of doing over there seems like things are going really well yeah, so I mean, um, it's been a really interesting um, uh, last two years, um, as you know well. Um, but uh, for Anti Flag, whether or not we are um, on tour every day or we're finding different ways to um, creatively and actively use the tools within our power to spread empathy or um, work to alleviate suffering. That's our goal all the time. And so for a lot of people, when the shutdown happened uh, and their band or their art was uh, no longer viable as a traveling entity, it was a lot of soul searching. And for us, that really wasn't the case. It was just like, let's put our heads together. Let's figure out creative solutions to still share these messages and these ideas, regardless of whether or not you're doing it at a concert venue or a festival or whatever. So um, this new building that we're talking about is part of that like we've been searching um for the right spot in pittsburgh to have a like community space for 20 years and um we finally had the time because of uh not going on tour every three weeks uh uh to like really devote uh the energy uh, uh to it and that's what we have so i'm greatly looking forward to the next chapter that this brings in terms of um, I'd like to record some bands from Pittsburgh. I'd like to open it up uh, uh, to people in the community to come and learn how to record and do things like that. So um, there's a new chapter that's a brewing because um, the COVID and the pandemic uh, uh, absence from normalcy created a real opportunity for us to uh, figure out a new way to do the thing that we do. And um, so that's been really exciting. Now I've been saying so frequently, but although everything that's happened the last two, two years is definitely not what we wanted. It's all about kind of finding those silver linings and those opportunities and, you know, making the best out of such a crappy situation. So the fact that you have been able to do that and you seem so excited about everything that's on the horizon. I mean, that's a really wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to see and such a great outlook and mindset to have during all of this. Yeah. And I mean, obviously our, our world is such a tiny speck compared to the pain and the loss and suffering that the pandemic has created. Um, but I think that the skill set that Anti Flag has, and that the skill set of the punk rock community in general, is just that we see a situation that is surrounded or or clouded by intense negativity, and we actively do the work to scrape away that layers of pain, to scrape away the layers of suffering and find um, what we ultimately hope for, uh, for something that we can hang our hats on as a positive outcome. And so, um, you know, that's not to say that there wasn't a lot of pain and a lot of loss um, that we all endured. You know, we've had relatives that lost their lives to COVID. We've had people um, in our lives that, you know, we haven't seen for a year, a year and a half that, you know, that, really demand our attention and our love and, and that's been that's been a painful part of the process but um you're right i mean this search 
for good uh, and the bad is uh, it's always on. And um, you have to be a bit of an eternal optimist to be involved in rock and roll and punk rock in general. You have to, like, like I said, actively search for the good. One of the things that happens to be good and just really positive and something that every band has been looking forward to is the fact that you will soon be hitting the road. You announced a North American tour this fall, and it's been a long 15 months away from tour life for you guys. So what emotions (laughs) kind of ran through your mind when you realized, wow, this is actually finalized? (laughs) Well, I mean, I can't look, I'm, I, I'm very vain. I love the idea of people clapping for me. I, it's a very exciting thing, you know, like that's been maybe the most missed part of the absence of rock and roll is that you, so much of our lives, we feel alone and we feel disconnected from um, what the status quo is. And, um, and, and in that disconnect, you're searching for acceptance. And we found great acceptance for the last 20 years as a band by traveling the world, meeting people who believe that a better world is possible, meeting people who believe that racism and sexism and Islamophobia and xenophobia and the isms of the world need to be eradicated and we can at least build this community this tiny speck uh that exists free from that bullshit and to be absent from that for 15 months has been really painful um so i am really grateful that we get to announce the things and the shows i am also a little nervous because um i've enjoyed being home <laughs> this is the longest right. i've been home in 20 years so i'd be like um, riding a bike again <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah so there's a little bit there's a, all of it there's excitement there's fear um but the thing that i'm most excited about is the the show itself the 45 minutes the hour the hour and a half whatever it may be that is such a tremendous opportunity for us to be ourselves and so much of our daily lives and it doesn't matter if all you are is a person who does interviews or if you're a person who plays in a rock band or if you paint or you write or whatever to exist in 2021 you are consistently compromising your true self and there are very few spaces where you get to be free and be yourself completely and so to have that opportunity that's the most valuable part of rock and roll for me it's it's not um it's not music it's not songs it's not you know selling records or t-shirts it's it's that freedom uh to to be around people who are truly themselves and for you to be accepted for who you are no it's honestly one of those beautiful things and i love the juxtaposition because when people think of rock and roll they think of how hard it can be and how intense but it really is about that love and the gathering and a spot where you'll actually be able to bring all of those qualities is also anti-fest 2021 that it of course includes yourselves but then some other fantastic bands like suicide machines punchline bad cop bad cop dollskins this army so i've heard that putting together a festival you're shaking your head like it's crazy i can see it kind of running it is crazy. Yeah. Right now, that's a great I, can't believe how well, I can't believe how well you rattled that off if you asked <laughs> me to do that i would not have done it that well yeah um, <laughs> but i've heard behind the scenes you know putting together a festival can be such a pain so how was your experience doing so and did you kind of come across any of those issues or was it kind of smooth sailing now um no we've come across those issues every time and and and, and um there's a lot of reasons why it's painful. One is unless a festival is established, the audience and the people that would come to it, they don't really understand what it is. And there's a lot of confusion. And so one of the greatest hurdles we've had, especially in Europe, is where people don't if it's more than three bands they just don't understand you know like that's how the tours work in europe it's two right. or three bands and then there are the big outdoor festivals and so when well, we had this idea of like yo let's let's play and have a, an eight band bill and it'll be an all-day event and it'll be indoors and everybody was just like wait you can't what? do that and i'm like <laughs> yeah and, and 
And I'm like, no, no, you can do this. This is going to work. And so it takes a long time to convince promoters and convince the people that sell concert tickets in the world um, that this is a good idea. And, and, and even if it's a failure uh, in the sense of, you know, normal expectations and economics, you know, if you don't sell all of the tickets or whatever, that to me is inconsequential to what it means to bring people from all sectors of life together and present them some ideas that they might not have heard before in the in, in whether it's in music or whether it's in art and so uh consistently with anti-fest what we've tried to do um gosh i think the first one was in like 2010 or something like that uh now so um uh, we try to do one or two of them a year and we try to put them in different cities everywhere. And this is the first one we've done in Pittsburgh, our hometown. Um, and with doing that, we're doing it at a venue we've never played before. And so there's a lot of really interesting and exciting elements to it. But again, for me, it's not about, um, oh man, when we put this show on and we sold, you know, 2000 tickets or whatever the Pittsburgh venue is that's going to be exciting and that's great but it's really about a person coming to the show because they like anti-flag or because they like suicide machines or bad cop bad cop Modern. or any of the bands yeah and then they get exposed to a doll skin or they get exposed to we're going to have um uh uh to the front which is a traveling photographer uh exposition and they're going to have uh, displaying their art and their photography at, at the show and someone's going to see that that un undoubtedly will have never heard of them before never seen that before never been exposed to all female and non-binary concert photography and that to me is a victory you know so if the show is not a financial success We've learned that um, if we hinge our art upon what is going to sell, we're going to fail far more times than we are going to win. So for us, it's just about doing things that we believe in and that we love. Um, because if your get rich quick scheme is to play rock and roll, uh, you should find a new one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not the way. <laughs> yeah, it's not the way. Yeah, you get, might as well stand in the street and hope to get struck by lightning because that's about <laughs> the same uh same odds so yeah definitely need a big stroke of luck on that one but fans yeah, yeah, seem yeah, absolutely sure. they do seem absolutely pumped about the lineup that you put together and it, it's stacked there's so many great bands that we mentioned but i was curious obviously all of us right now are music fans especially those who happen to perform in bands so you're missing just it's, i'm assuming attending concerts in general so who are three bands that you would love to see headline a concert if you could just attend one right now Mm, that's really great. So um, I would love to see Billy Talent. Um, I love them um, as humans and I love their band. And I, I think they're such a powerful live band. Um, very similar in terms of sonic display, but definitely a different sounding band. Um, Rage Against the Machine is the band that I'm most looking forward to seeing. Um, uh, and I'm hoping that our paths cross here as they're doing their reunion shows in 2022, I believe. Um, and then the third band, um, I really would, um, we've got some friends in, um, and I just recorded their record, um, they're a band called Grumpster, and they're going to be on the first part of our uh, tour. And they're a young band and, and really new, and um, I produced their album. So the songs that we just recorded, I've never seen them perform. So I'm really interested to see what they do with the, the, the kind of changes that we came up together with in the room and in the studio and see how they extrapolate that into the live setting. So um, those would be my top three right now. Um, one for pure, um, you know, Grumpster, I want to critique their show and tell them what we can be doing to do better. Uh, Rage Against the Machine, I just want to feel empowered and I want to feel like the, the change that the world so desperately needs is right within our grasp because that's what I feel every time I see them. And Billy Talent, I just want to see my friends and I want to play hockey with John 
I want to fucking <laughs> <laughs> laugh at Ben's jokes. And then I want to hear those songs because those are some of my favorite songs in the world. So Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I definitely go to see that lineup. And it kind of goes back to the whole thing we were mentioning about the festival, you know. I'm not familiar with Grumster, but I'd be going to see a Rage or a Billy Talon and I'd walk away learning from a great new band. So yeah, nice, uh, yeah. little full circle ca- callback there. <laughs> cool, <laughs> it, cool. When it does come to your music, the band shared a new video for your song, Born to Run. Of course, Born to Run from the Law, Born to Run from the Order, Born to Run from a Cop, Born to Run from a Border. Obviously, though, things in the world are crazy, intense, frustrating. So how is it for you all just tackling more serious topics like this one? Because, of course, you're no strangers to uh, opening up about things like nations, politics. Well, I mean, I think that that you know, we're consistently looking for ways to document what's happening. And that's what the songs and the records are to us. They're just documentation of plights against humanity or abuses of power or, um, you know, of course, the victories that we all share in when we do tackle the status quo head on and make these changes that we so desperately seek. So, with a song like Born to Run, I mean, that's just born out of looking around and seeing suffering from people uh, of all different nationalities who are searching for an alleviation of that suffering. And we have this country in America that from day one we're told to believe is uh, the greatest country in the land, one that um, – uh, you know, the Statue of Liberty, give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. And then you have this border crisis where we're consistently turning our back on some of the most vulnerable people within society. And that to me is a fundamental failure of American exceptionalism and American democracy. So essentially what we're doing is we're just going on record and saying, look, regardless of whether or not you may or may not think that rock and roll or punk rock music has the ability to change these things or to set forward a path that will lead us to something different. There is a document in place of these four kids in Pittsburgh who feel this way, who feel that a better world is right around the corner. And it starts with us caring for and housing and clothing and feeding and, and, and doing the right humane things that we can do for those who are suffering the most within our societies. And so um, at first I would say like when the band started, there was a bit of naivete and it was like, okay, we're going to write a song on Tuesday and then Wednesday racism's gone. We did it. You look up revolution in the dictionary, my picture's there, I'm waving, Um, but that's not how it works. You know, it's about, it's about changing people. And you interact with people, they come in contact with these new ideas, and then that person talks to their friends or their family, and it goes to their school, their work, their dinner table, whatever. And that's how we shift and change the world. It's not a band or a record or t-shirt that ever does it. Um, It's the relationships and the community that's built out of the art and out of the scene. No, I couldn't agree more. And it's honestly been really inspirational seeing you guys over the years, just kind of giving no fuck saying like, yeah, this is what we believe in. We're just going to put it out there. Uh, very balls to the wall. And I've, I've always really respected you guys for that. And the fact you're still doing it now, kudos. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks. We don't know how to do anything else. So regardless of if people were there or they weren't there, this is what we're going to do. And we've just always kind of had our head down and, and believed in ourselves and believed in the songs that we wrote. And and, and ultimately, uh, you know, it's nice to have the perspective of age to look back and say, OK, this is where we were right. This is where we were wrong. These were for failures. These were successes. How do we manifest that in a better way moving forward? And that's consistently what it is, whether it's you know, writing a song or whether it's how the record is recorded or whether it's how we present it to the world. We are referencing all of our history as a band and learning step by step. Um, Because essentially to believe that you are, you know, infallible or have all the answers. I mean, that's just fucking ridiculous. I I, I, like, I don't know where we're going to go or how we're going to get there. I just know when I see something that I believe can be different or should be different, that it demands our attention. Um, and, you know, walking by people that are in pain is no is of no interest to me. Um, the alleviation of that pain is, is what's most valuable. 
you're trying and I feel like that's the most important part and hopefully step by step with all the other people in the world you are uh, some kind of difference will be made in the end <laughs> but um yeah yeah we're always we're we're desperately seeking tangible victories but we know that that if you add up your victories and your losses it's it's um it becomes quite cumbersome. So it's important to set goals for yourself, like achievable goals. You know, of course we have the goal to paint the white house black at the top of the list, but then you've got, okay, well, I want to interact with this person and I want to share this story from my life and let them know that they're not alone and feeling the way they do. So like you've got the lowest rung and you've got the highest rung. And at the end of it, you can look back and say, well, we did a lot. And, and that's what gives you the energy to keep going. 100%. Well, the last thing I wanted to ask you about is the fact that I know you love hockey, you love pugs, and you also love effect pedals. So if you had to only choose one of these loves going forward, which would you keep? Oh, my goodness. That is so terrible. <laughs> well, because, you know, again, if, if I choose ice hockey, then that means I've thrown my dog away. And what type of a human being <laughs> does that? Um, so, I mean, the the right answer is the animal because the animal reciprocates the love. Of course. Uh, and, you know, uh, but... I just kind of threw that be... in jokingly, but if it was really between <laughs> hockey and effect pedals, it's, that's... that's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, up. I could easily... I would easily give away every effect pedal in the world and just play ice hockey till, till the bones yeah. fall off of me. Um, it's been the thing, it's like the, it's seriously the most meditative thing that I do. It's the only place in the world where my brain truly shuts off. And um, I am grateful for that space and that time where I'm not like, I, I was talking to somebody about it um, the other day and, and just was like, yeah, when I've been, I've been playing shows in front of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people and thought like, did I pay the electric bill? Like, oh, geez, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's because real life just rears its ugly head into places that you would never expect. But I've never once been playing hockey and thought about anything other than oh. don't die, stay on your feet, like, <laughs> try to score, you know, like, that's it. So um, it is a valuable shut off for me. So it would be hard mm -hmm. to give it up but I think I would have to keep my dog um, because I would be a cruel, inhumane person. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I just wanted to throw that in there just to see how you would react. I absolutely love people's reactions. <laughs> it's something that's just so, so taboo, but uh, well, I knew. Now, you, now you've, you've given me this anxiety that I have to run out into the world with. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Chris, I really do want to say thank you so much for taking the time for hopping on here. It's been fantastic being able to chat about everything going on with the band and yourself. So really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you very much. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you at one of these shows coming up. Yeah, fingers crossed. To everybody watching, awesome. this has been Chris number two from Anne Flag. Be sure to check out aliciasuit.com for more exclusive interviews and features. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Peace.